Hi, this is your Sapin Bhartiya and welcome to another episode of Tier Five. Let's talk. And today we have with us Wes Wilson, VP of Operations at Open Infra Foundation. Wes, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You were recently uh, promoted to the role of VP of Operations. We, you have been with the foundation for a very long time, and a lot of things have changed in all these years. You know, foundation has been on for about 10, 11, 12 years. Uh, things have changed. So since you recently, you know, moved to a new role, so I want to hear from you. What do you see? What is Open Infra Foundation in today's world where, you know, things are more and more, I remember early days of, you know, Open uh, open Stack, you know, Foundation, you're talking about, you know, thousands of cores at CERN and all those things. Now everybody is moving to cloud. Everybody is kind of uh, embracing that. So first of all, uh, what is Open Infra Foundation in today's cloud-centric world and what role you folks are playing in helping uh, organizations embrace uh, cloud? Yeah, so as you know, uh, being in the community, the OpenStack uh, Foundation was created specifically to support the OpenStack software. Um, at the time, I mean, that was that was needed. Um, uh, and it and obviously has paid off. The OpenStack software is, you know, in 40 million plus cores around the world. And, um, you know, has really defined like what open source infrastructure is. Um, but since then, you know, the landscape has changed quite a bit. Use cases have changed. Um, you know, now we're, we're needing um, infrastructure for uh, cases like edge and, and AI. And so that's really how we have evolved as a foundation. So we are still obviously focusing on OpenStack. It's, it's still a huge part of what we do. Um, you know, our most recognized project and one that we um, uh, spend a lot of energy on, but we're also looking at the additional use cases and how we can support, um, you know, open source infrastructure, you know, uh, being such a, a, a big component around the world. Let's also talk about, uh, you know, your role uh, as you have taken over the role of VP of operation. What does that mean for you, day, your day-to-day -day operations? At the same time, what does it mean for the foundation? What are the things that you will be focusing on? It's a, a massive role. Um, so as you mentioned, I started um, uh, over eight years ago at the foundation, and I've worn a ton of hats, um, which sort of suits me. Uh, I've done everything from uh, web and design to product management and marketing. And so I've, I've had the chance to sort of fill uh, a lot of seats. Um, over the past uh, probably year or so, I've been working on building our, our project hosting framework, which is something that we uh, have been talking about a lot lately. Um, and that piece in particular covers everything from you know open source strategy to um, uh, finance to legal pieces, trademark, all that stuff. And so I've really had a chance to dive into all those pieces. Um, and that's really what suited me for this this VP of operations role. So um, still wearing lots of hats in this role. It's just a little more official now um, and getting a chance to to work um, more deeply on on providing value to to our members. Any specific you know, initiative that either you are driving or that is uh, under you know work at the foundation? As I mentioned, this project hosting framework is the big one. Um, it's called Open Infra Project Funds. Uh, that is one, you know, we... Um, Going back a little bit in the conversation, we're talking about moving from OpenStack to um, focusing more on uh, open source infrastructure as a whole. We started hosting other projects uh, a few years ago through our, our uh, main fund. So like uh, Kata Containers, for example, Starling X. These are projects that are in the infrastructure space that we support. Um, but what we've been hearing a lot from our members is that... Um, they wanted a way to more directly support and fund um, projects. So instead of all of the funds coming in uh, to the main foundation and then being sort of divvied up from there, uh, they were looking for a way to more uh, directly support those things. So that's why the project funds uh, came to be. Can you explain what do you really mean? Is it is it like, you know, just where there are other foundations where, you know, there's one umbrella foundation and within there, they have all the projects, but then there are foundations within foundation where, you know, those is other projects, they manage their own marketing, they manage their own funding, they manage their own teams. So is this what we're talking about? It's very similar. Yeah. So basically, um, uh, a project fund can be specific for uh, one specific project. Uh, so in other words, if you have a set of uh, organizations that come together, uh, they want to focus on uh, one specific project. They would, um, we would basically set up a legal entity for them. Uh, we would help them form governance. Uh, and then they would have a separate budget that they would then allocate towards that project. And that can happen towards a single project or, like you mentioned, more of an umbrella foundation. 
uh, under the setup. So these kind of you know sub projects will have their own you know autonomous projects where they will have their own governance model. They they will have their own community. So it it it, it I mean of course Open Infra Foundation will pro provide kind of the basic infrastructure and all the resources, but they will be able to manage their own projects. Right? Is that correct? Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And and so really um, that's one of the reasons that we. Um, uh, we created these so that we could help facilitate, you know, those those communities uh, more directly. So yeah, they will be able to to support that, and obviously we will uh, have the opportunity to pull them into our, you know, already existing network of of open infrastructure uh, providers and and users and operators. Can you give some examples where or, or this is in very early phase, or there are already some projects which are you know part of this initiative already? We are in an early phase. Uh, we did. Um, uh, talk about this at our last summit, mostly uh, for the fact that we we're going down this path, and we've spent the past uh, year working to operationalize operationalize the process. So um, we do have some uh, projects that we are um, uh, discussing right now uh, about moving this in. But we um, and and there's potential uh, of announcing these at the Open Infra Summit coming up in Vancouver. Uh, but probably not at a good spot to talk about those just yet. What happens is sometimes as companies today they do like open source but sometimes they are hesitant sometimes they don't feel very comfortable or confident in company owned open source projects because companies you have also seen they change the license so foundations play a very big uh, critical role in kind of not only creating an even playing field but also making uh, companies comfortable with open source uh, so talk about with this new initiative where you're funding the project, how it will accelerate that, not ad adoption is already there, but where companies also like, because once you put something in open infra, once again, the thing is that, hey, you know, big resources, you might get a little chunk of your funds depending on what it is, but now you might get the dedicated resources depending on what resources you're bringing in. So how it will further accelerate this adoption of folks, you know, uh, releasing their code into open source for, uh, you know, this uh, cloud projects? Yeah, no, it's a good question. So, um, I mean, Primarily, what we what we offer, right? we're like like you said, we're a, a neutral ground for it. So we uh, are able to take on the IP, uh, the trademark pieces, and, and put them in a place to where it can't be, uh, you know, quote unquote, taken advantage of by one of the organizations. Uh, and then we also, through our governance structures uh, and through just our model and our philosophy, our, our four opens and our, our three forces philosophy that we've developed through, um, you know, growing OpenStack, uh, create a, an environment that just makes it. Um, productive and easier for uh, uh, multiple organizations to collaborate together uh, to focus on you know the, the true work at hand which is uh, developing and improving the software that they care about do you also have any kind of life cycle of the maturity of the project because some projects come at a very early phase they are not ready for productions but as the community grow they so do you also have any such plans for the maturity or evolution of the projects also which will be part of this initiative we uh, in the past have had um, uh, 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 basically a life cycle, which is uh, a pilot projects and confirmed projects, which is what we currently have under the current funds. And we absolutely would have the opportunity to do that for each one of these project funds. Um, but we have the framework set up in a way that um, allows the organizations that come in to work together to, to work with us, obviously helping guide them and that to develop the, the, um, the life cycle that works best for, for their communities and their projects. So, um, you know, some instances we've we've talked to organizations that are looking to um, looking for our support for projects that are uh, very mature, and others they're looking for support for projects that are you know just getting off the ground. So, um, you know, we really have the opportunity to to support the gamut of, of ranges. If there is a is a you know company organizations which is you know thinking of releasing a project, uh, why should they look at Open Infra Foundation? Sure, no, it's, it's a good question and you're right, there are there are options. Um, uh, I think there's a couple of things. First, you know, is our focus. We we really just focus on the infrastructure layer of things. Uh, that's that's our sweet spot, that's what we understand. Um, obviously with, with OpenStack being there, we have a, a pretty significant network that we could tap into uh, in that layer as well. Um, and then just given our, our focus, um, we're obviously, we're gonna have, you know, I don't foresee us having, you know, thousands or even hundreds of projects coming in. So um, I would say with that, you know, we're able to, to put a lot more attention on the individual projects or project funds um, that would come in. And then finally, like I mentioned before, we just we have a model uh, that we are very proud of that we that we know works really well. 
um, in creating a really open and transparent environment for working uh, in open source, which, you know, the four opens uh, and the three forces, which if anybody's familiar with OpenStack, they probably have heard those terms before. Since, you know, uh, you mentioned uh, the upcoming event, open, you know, the, the summit is there in Vancouver. Uh, these events, uh, in-person events also play a very big role in bringing the community together. Uh, once again, what role will these events play for these uh, projects? Will like, uh, like there is a project, as you said, there will not be hundreds of projects, but who knows? But uh, let's say there are projects which are growing. So maybe they want to do something which is because their community is big. So can there also be a possibility of having dedicated days or dedicated sessions for those specific projects? Or maybe, who knows, there will be a dedicated you know event just for that project. Yeah. No, absolutely, um, and and that's the way that we've we've structured uh, these project funds in particular. We create the opportunity for that, and really hope that we get to that point um, with these projects, and expect that we will. Um, so we, we've structured them similar to basically the the process that we went along in developing and growing the community with OpenStack. Where we we're creating the opportunity to do that with other projects as well. Um, so yeah, if if the moment comes where they want to have their individual uh, community days events. Um, that's definitely a possibility if they wanted up having their own uh, summits uh, at that scale. That's a possibility as well. When companies, you know, when they have a project and they start thinking about releasing that project into any you know foundation, uh, they have a lot of questions. At what stage do you folk get involved? Because sometimes they need a lot of help before they even plan to release a project. Sometimes, as you said, as the project mature, then they also need a lot of help for the maturity of the project. So if there are organizations who are, at what uh, stage you get involved or how, what kind of resources you make available for them? So because there's a lot of legal framework in the wall, IPs they have to care about, they have cleaned up a lot of code. So, so talk about how do you help them in bringing their projects to Open Info Foundation? Where we get involved, I think, just depends on on where the project is overall. Uh, we have the ability to get involved very, very early or very, very late. Um, I would say the the one caveat to that is that we we really focus on you know wanting software to go into production. So, uh, our our um, uh, I guess our main goal is to make sure that the the foundations or the the project funds that we set up are, um, you know, there is real software behind them. We're not, you know, interested in creating sort of like shells. Um, so as far as like what we can do to help, uh, you know, we've got a ton of experience and expertise, and they put a lot of time into this framework, both on the legal aspects and just as far as like um, helping guide these organizations to to create like the most collaborative and productive environments together. So. Um, yeah, everything from uh, helping guide with with branding uh, through the trademark pieces, through uh, governance establishment, both the funding governance um, through the project funds or the technical governance. Um, yeah, that's those are all the pieces that we we'd love to be involved in. If you look at the open infra, open stack, you know, adoption, it's a lot globally. Europe, you know, a lot of you know big telcos they're embracing it. In Asia, China, there's a lot, you know, Japan, a lot of adoption is happening. We are seeing in Europe a lot of, you know, from the public sector, a lot of initiatives are coming in, which is in terms of open source. But it, it uh, the challenge is that it looks like, you know, as much as the policymakers want to do good thing, they still have a not very good understanding of how open source work. Since your presence in this area, Will you also be getting involved in a way to help public sector to to kind of understand and have right policies there? Yeah, I mean, it, as far as the extent, uh, I think that's still to be determined. But we definitely have plans of of getting more involved on a global scale. That's some things that we uh, hope to talk about um, soon, particularly at the summit as well. Um, but yeah, uh, that's that's one of our our uh, goals uh, this year in particular, moving forward, is to. Uh, to help bridge some of those gaps globally. We have our membership base is, is all over the world. We have users and developers, um, you know, in I think it was 180 plus countries or something like that. Like it's, it's you know, our reach is pretty, pretty massive. So I think we're in a, a unique position to be able to help uh, with some of those problems. There are many foundations uh, which are there where you see, hey, you know, we have to come together to kind of educate the the lawmakers, uh, or you feel that, hey, no, it, it's very early. It's, I think it's important. I mean, it's it's not a zero sum game, right? I mean, this is uh, open source is, um, you know, uh, it's it's global, and and you know, we ch we've talked before, but we try to to create the opportunity to collaborate without boundaries, and so that's you know both. 
uh, geopolitically and then also across foundations. So, um, yeah, we have uh, done some collaborative work with with other foundations and, uh, you know, like our um, and also across other uh, other open source organizations, for example, our, our general manager, Turi. Um, Chris is is on the board for OSI, for example. So yeah, we're always looking for opportunities to collaborate uh, both with other foundations and other organizations to to help bridge some of those gaps. Wes, thank you so much for taking time out today and share, of course, you know, congratulations on your new role and share all these, you know, the new initiatives to fund projects to to help, you know, others project grow within the foundation. And uh, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.